Welcome to Harris Hikers podcast. Um, my name is Conley and today we're talking about my eating disorder recovery journey. On my social channels, I talk a lot about my eating disorder, my recovery process and everything that kind of went into that. And so I'm kind of wanting to do a little bit of a deeper dive into those topics because I'm only able to give a snippet here and there of my journey exactly. So we're going to dive into it. First and foremost, I want to give a trigger warning to those who might be affected or triggered by these topics. Uh, you can fast forward this episode and wait till the next one because we're going to be talking about some sensitive topics. So let's start from the beginning. In seventh grade, my parents decided to go on a big kind of like health kick and a lot of it had to do with my dad's high blood pressure and a lot of the stress he was under. He had gained some weight and so naturally our whole family kind of went on this kick of eating healthy and really incorporating a lot of diet culture concepts into our family. The intention of my family was so pure. There's literally a motorcycle out there, but (laughs) the intentions of my family were literally so pure and they wanted our entire family to be as healthy as possible, especially with my dad. And we all did it with him to support his journey and just healthy eating. And we were just kind of wanting to include the concept into our own family. Putting that aside, my mom had kind of struggled with her own weight loss journey and so I heard had heard a lot of it growing up and so a lot of those ideas of like losing weight and trying to look thinner were already kind of like idealized in my mind even as early as seventh grade it wasn't as bad back that I didn't like I didn't hyper fixate on what I ate and stuff like that however it still was in my subconscious mind so when this health kick kind of began in seventh grade a lot of things were incorporated into my worldview about food carbs became bad and starting in seventh grade I didn't eat carbs unless it was like a like high protein oatmeal like something like that like I had really cut down on pretty much all the carbs and I cut down a lot of sugar we did like as a family we did this thing where it's like if we didn't eat any like carbs or sugar throughout the day then we'd have like a low calorie ice cream as like a reward for dessert which I understand the intention and like the wanting to make your family healthier but that just kind of like reward system really messed up my relationship with food it was really hard on me and again this is not crapping on my family they everyone has their own struggles with food I'm just talking about my experience so as I began to eat less carbs and less sugar I did get much skinnier I wasn't big before in any means necessary I just got a lot thinner than what I was and as a 13 14 year old girl I was getting a lot of affirmations especially from other women um older women my mom's friends were always like oh you look so skinny you look so good and a lot of people ended up like commenting on weight loss when and honestly in reality I wasn't even trying to lose weight I was just trying to like get in on this family's health kick but then that's when it became kind of toxic because then it was like everyone was praising like the skinny and everything like that and then like I started eating the, like the low carb diet to get skinnier the whole thing is a little bit of a slow fade and as I tell the story you're gonna see how it progressively gets worse and how something that was intended for good even though it was a little toxic to begin with it turned very very bad and quickly when you're 13 and 14 years old you already are wanting to find acceptance in this world it's kind of like those instrumental developmental years for socially um mentally emotionally all those things and so I felt like I was really getting acceptance within my own family and other people's point of view from looking thinner and not to mention I was very passionate about athletics and I felt like that teammates and coaches were even saying things and I was like oh shoot does this mean I to be a good player I have to be I have to stay this skinny for the rest of my life or this thin I'll never forget this moment my freshman year of high school I was playing indoor volleyball I come in and I think I wanted I went to a one of the varsity practices I was initially on the JV team but then every once in a while I'd go to the varsity practices if they needed an extra player and the girls couldn't stop talking to me about how much they loved my legs how thin they thought they were and how toned and how lean and it was such a pivotal developmental moment for me because I think like I began to I tie my worth with how small I can make my body back to the low carb thing so as I began eating this kind of like it didn't seem extreme in the moment but now looking about it back on it it was a very extreme diet um it it really affected so many different areas of my life because I became judgmental of people that would like eat carbs. So I was that girl who was like super judgy about it and fully admitted, I'm so sorry if I was horrible to anyone in the past, but I was just so judgy about the carb thing and I felt like I was better than people because I wasn't eating carbs and sugar and I just almost had a superiority complex about it. But that was also given to me by like my family and peers and those around me. It was a really, really 
um, it was a complicated network of emotions. And something that also became a problem within this journey is that we all as a family began weighing ourselves. And so like, it was really exciting to see my dad get healthy, but then it was also like, we were encouraged, me and my sister were encouraged to weigh ourselves. And my sister has a very similar journey as me. We were encouraged to weigh ourselves. And the thing was, is that like when I, so I was already like got pretty small and then I would announce I lost another two pounds and they'd be like, everyone would be super happy for me in the family. They'd be like, oh, like we're so proud of you. And hearing like, the words I'm so proud of you from a parent based off of like weight loss really just makes it really does change your perspective on life and it's like oh okay like these are the things in life that matter weight loss and again like I talked about the slow fade at first I when I was really into this like low carb low sugar diet I was packing a salad an apple some kale chips to school like I was packing like full lunches and it was great but as the mind shifts shifted to weight loss it began being like just a salad and then it became just the apple and then it became just the protein bar so it was it definitely became a slow fade which kind of like I lost a lot of weight I probably was more on the anorexic side and then probably around like junior year of high school it probably went into the binging side so I was like restricting for so long and for at this point multiple years restricting so much and then to the point where I would like lose my lose control whenever I would allow myself to have like a a reward at the end of the week like okay I ate well I'm gonna have like low calorie ice cream I'd eat the entire pint because I like literally had no control and that this this it's a vicious cycle between restricting and binging and it was just so I, I felt like I was so alone. I felt so ashamed. And right when I would uh, be done binging, I would like just feel so bad at myself and wake up the next morning and clock in like eight or nine miles before practice or after practice, something crazy like that. And so this whole cycle literally continued until m- about the end of my freshman year of college. So essentially this went on for a very long time, seventh grade to freshman year of college, a really, it progressively became dark and it, I would say I hit rock bottom freshman year of college for sure. So freshman year of college, I go and I'm playing beach volleyball, division one beach volleyball in Houston, Texas at a school called Houston Baptist. And this is where the perfect storm happened. I had a coach that would weigh us consistently. It wasn't for bad reasons. He wasn't trying to like track or like he was trying to track our weight, but he wasn't trying to like tell us we were like fat or anything, but essentially like seeing like being forced to weigh myself every day with already a very like intense division one schedule kind of like made my mental health shift and like made it way worse. And also made it this worse that you weigh yourself in front of people. So like one day if I was weighing like two pounds more than I did, like Uh, like last Thursday I would be like freaking out and panicking and then restricting even more and then I kind of got to a point where I was restricting so much my freshman year of college it just got so much worse that I began doing even more binging and it just became a horrible vicious cycle part of the reason why it became so bad my freshman year of college is because the summer going into that year I had mm, my parents had gotten me this book called made to crave and it was like it was basically a, cause I'm, I'm a Christian and it was basically this Christian book about weight loss. And so, which my, my family had already really intertwined our faith with like eating healthy. It was like very much like God calls us to honor our bodies. Like God calls us to be as fit and as healthy as possible, but it was almost taken too far. So it was like, cause it was like called like a spiritual battle. So like resisting the foods was like a spiritual battle. So it was like very, like the whole food thing was made very, very religious in my household and spiritual so it made it much harder to disconnect than you would think because it was so intertwined with my faith that was really really complicated to get out but anyway going into my freshman year of college I was given this book it was it was more about how like your spirituality can help you with your health and to be honest it's not even a bad book made to crave is actually like a really good book if you're a Christian and wanting to like get healthy however with someone who already had an eating disorder this was like the worst case scenario like I said the perfect storm so not to mention I have like the spiritual awakening with like I need to lose even more weight I'm like because at that point I was like 10 pounds heavier than was my freshman year of high school and I was like beating myself up that I was like 10 pounds heavier it's like obviously you're 14 your freshman year of high school and then in college you're 19 first year college you're 19 so it's like obviously you should weigh more So anyway, I had this huge spiritual awakening. I was like, I need to get my life back under control, which it's crazy because it wasn't even out of control. What was out of control was the eating disorder. And so I go my freshman year and it's just kind of a train wreck. I'm already out of state. 
I'm struggling with this eating disorder. My coach is weighing me. And then it somehow gets worse. <laughs> Season starts. We're spring sports. So we're playing Division One beach volleyball. Very intense. There's a lot going on. And then I had, because of my, my binging restricting cycle, I think I had gained a total of like six pounds, six or seven pounds. And that honestly was probably just to do like womanhood. And like we were doing a ton of weightlifting and just like a ton of practicing. So probably a lot of muscle. But I like thought like my binging was making me gain weight so I was like so stressed out so like beyond like belief like I was just like in a horrible place and then my coach comes up to me like before literally one of my games and like says like hey I noticed like your weight is like not really like where I want it to be like talking about like my weight like I know that you really try to eat healthy like and he was like honestly like I from I'm not trying to defend him but like he was trying to help and like he, he just didn't know what the things that I was going through and like I literally spiraled after that. Okay, really quick, I'm editing the video right now, and I kind of wanted to explain more about this situation. So, you're probably wondering, like, Conley, why wouldn't you tell anyone about this coach who is weighing you and, like, who commented about your weight? But it's, like, when you're in an eating disorder and you're already so self-conscious about your weight, and he was already weighing us in front of everyone else, and so I was, like, I cannot let anyone know that he doesn't like the way I weigh. It was, like, so embarrassing also. But then it was also like D1 is like so competitive. So I was like, do these girls and I was I had a starting spot at this point. So I was like, do these girls think they can beat me out now? Because like my coach thinks I have like a couple pounds overweight. So it was like so complex and so many different layers. And so I didn't really want to say anything. And I do end up leaving. And that is the best decision I could have ever made. So then to add another layer of complexity to the problem, I'm now trying to lose weight for my coach. And it's just a massive, massive problem. And I'm a different state away from my family. It's just, it's already hard your first year of college. And it was just kind of a train wreck. So that summer, I like kind of have to make a decision. I'm like, am I, it's not even about like the atmosphere. Cause I honestly, quite frankly, I loved the school. It wasn't even about the coach or the atmosphere. It was like, am I a healthy enough individual to go away to a state for college? Like, I I was having to make those hard decisions and be like I don't know if I can if I'm like a healthy enough individual to do that and not to mention I don't think the very intense atmosphere of division one was helping me with my eating disorder I don't I think like it was very intense and I, and I don't think like having that much of my identity and worth being in my sport was helping my eating disorder to begin with obviously there's other reasons why I transferred but the eating disorder thing was super big for me and the reason why I wanted to transfer and this also was the summer I like finally admitted I have a problem because up until literally this point, I refused to believe that I had an eating disorder because I, re- I associated eating disorders with making yourself throw up all the time. And why I did that, it was really rare. I did do it a few times. I did purge a few times. However, it was pretty rare for me too. So I didn't put myself in the eating disorder category. I was like, yeah, like, you know, I like sometimes struggle with food. And I'm like, no, you idiot, you have an eating disorder. So I finally, it was actually my sister who had some very similar struggles to me because she grew up in a very, she grew up in the same household. So she had very similar problems. Um, and she actually ended up going to therapy. And so when I, my end of my freshman year, she's like, yo, like we have eating disorders. You need to get help. Like you need to get out of the situation. So I made a decision to transfer schools and get help, get therapy. I decided to play to NAI school, Vanguard University. I already graduated, but it was literally the best decision of my life. Atmosphere was much healthier. allowed me to like get, th- get um, therapy and recover from my eating disorder without like feeling pressured to like look super toned lean and have like this crazy body perform division one. While NAI is a really great great division and like there's a lot of great competition I didn't feel as much pressure to do those things which really helped me fully recover and not to mention coming back home just really allowed me to be a healthier individual really get my feet back under me and just going to like a much less intense volleyball program just really gave me the freedom to get better and you're probably thinking Conley how did no one see you guys and be like oh my gosh they have an eating disorder like how come no one said anything and because that's honestly when I look back on my journey I think the same thing and like while I did have people be like hey maybe you should be eating more than an apple and a salad with no dressing all day long like I'd have people say that every once in a while especially like I had um, a couple coaches in high school say that god bless them um but like I was also too stuck in my ways and too like fixated on this belief that it was like I was almost like a little bit too far gone I needed like to get help in therapy However, even though there's only really probably two or three people that probably called me out for like, I probably need to eat more. But in the grand scheme of things, it's like 
I'm so glad there's so much more awareness of eating disorders now because like, and I, I feel like like with other people, I can tell if like someone's struggling a little bit, but like, I'm just so much glad that there's like people out there now who are like, looking out for stuff like that. Because back when I was in high school in 2016, 17, and 18, like it, I, I had no one, there was no awareness of that. So no one even knew to be like, oh, maybe you have an eating disorder. So go get some help. So this is your sign. If you feel like that you're really restricting the food that you're eating and you're making up with it with really insane workouts and you're hyper fixating on what you're eating all day and then you literally lay down in bed and all you can think about is what you ate all day, this is your sign that you probably have an eating disorder and you definitely should go get help, go to therapy. It helped me tremendously. Also, something else that helped me is reading the intuitive eating book that was super helpful in my recovery, listening back to my body, giving the power back to myself and everything that has to do with that. Basically, intuitive eating is just this principle of your body is a temple. You can trust it. You can listen to it. You listen to the hunger cues. You listen to when you're full and you really like base your like this how you eat and the way you see food with like that mindset and it just helped me so much because for literally seven and a half eight years I had been disregarding hunger cues been disregarding full cues been like my body was just like constant survival mode with food it was like I didn't my body would think like oh like you've been restricting for seven days now I don't know when she like, you know my body was telling me you don't know when you're gonna get the next meal so binge and so I became aware that like one so many people struggle with this. Like, I think I was like really ashamed about it, but like, I was like, okay, so many people struggle. And then two, it's like, we give the power back to our bodies and our body is not gonna fail us in a way. Like our body is going to be like very like responsive and it's going to tell us what we need. Sounds crazy. I know. Read the intuitive eating book. That's the best way I can explain it. But therapy and intuitive eating, and then like a support group, were like the three main ways that helped me recover. Like I said, I had a sister I went through with this so it was very helpful having someone who was going through the same things as me um and even like our fitness journey and it's like trying to make ourselves smaller to begin getting more like into weightlifting we're making ourselves stronger instead of smaller there's a lot of complex elements to this and having someone to share those like share the struggles with but also the wins with is super helpful so that brings us back today so when I really started doing social media consistently probably back in like 2021 I had to come to a place where I had been like recovered for about a year so I like began posting about my journey with the eating disorder and my recovery at simultaneously I post a lot about outdoor content and hiking content so I started posting about how um the outdoors also helped heal my relationship with food and just like body positivity and stuff like that and that honestly was one of the main reasons why I am here where I am with social media is you guys responded so well that I didn't realize how many people also struggle and it honestly posting about stuff like that healed me in a way as much as it's healed you guys from like what you've said in the dms so thank you because it's your guys's dms and hearing your stories have helped me as well and I'm going to keep posting about body positivity and self-love and recovery because I believe it's still such a problem out there I know there's so many men and women that are struggling and there's hope I think that's one thing I needed to hear is that like when I was 19 and hitting rock bottom is that there's hope and things will get better for you. I also want to kind of end this podcast talking about how the outdoors helped heal my relationship with my body. So when I came back from playing volleyball in Houston and coming back to where I live, I live in Southern California, Orange County. I There's a lot of local trails and I've always been into hiking. I grew up doing it a lot, but I think I really dove deeper into it when I came back because I had the opportunity to and I just really missed my home so I dove into a lot more trails and trail research and I really just began falling in love with the outdoors since coming home and as I began to get outside more I began to love my body more and like just seeing like how capable my body was and like how better I performed when I fueled my body when I was on the trail also like kind of helped heal my relationship with food because when you go backpacking you can't be eating celery sticks the whole time while you're on the trail. You got to be eating Snickers bars, a lot of different high calorie foods. And so I even just think like the, just like how you have to feel yourself on the trail was really just so healing for me and is part of the reason why you'd think that like body positivity and the outdoors are so separate niches. But for me, they're one and the same because the outdoors, which I post about a lot is 
something that's so important in my life, but also I wouldn't really be here in a state of recovery with my eating disorder if it weren't for the outdoors. So again, if any of you guys have struggled with something similar or grew up in a similar family dynamic as me, please, please, please go get help. Therapy, so helpful. You need it. You literally need therapy if this is something you've been going through, especially for a long time. Get help. Stay in it. And I promise things will get better and there's light at the end of the road. Also remember that you are not alone. So many, so many people have struggled with this. And I'm so glad there's more awareness now of how many women have struggled with this and young girls. Another thing I'd recommend is unfollow every account that makes you feel some type of way about your food, your body, um, the way you should be eating, the way you shouldn't be eating, the way you should be working out, the way you shouldn't be working out. Unless it's like positive encouragement for the way you should be doing things, like unfollow immediately. If it's making you compare and feel bad about yourselves, unfollow. That's already going to help your mental state by like 75%. Next, make sure that you get a trusted friend or family member that you can tell what you're going through and then they can be like a little bit of accountability and help you through this time because letting someone know what you're going through is really 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 helpful and it can be a game changer for your recovery so that ends today's podcast please if you have any questions or want to know more comment below dm me on instagram youtube anything i will answer and respond and i will continually post content for eating disorder recovery and body positivity always because it it will be a constant problem in our society so stay tuned for those and i love you guys and promise me that if you're going through any of these things you will get help and support that you need also be sure to like this video if you're on youtube subscribe follow me on spotify and thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a great rest of your day